Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indisciplined Mind podcast for Friday, January 15th, 2016. So it is Friday. It is morning, but I'm not heading to work. I'm actually working from home this semester. Friday's my work from home day, but I had a couple errands that needed running, so I am running them in my car. (laughs) I'm running them in the sense of I'm driving to the errands. I'm running, yeah, that kind of thing. Oh, what am I thinking about today? It's a little warmer today. Today we're supposed to get into like 40, 41, and possibility of rain... But then tomorrow we're we're back down into the into the thirties and twenties and Monday and Tuesday we're supposed to be like highs of eighteen. So we got a couple of frigid days coming up. I love those. No, I don't. So yeah, but no snow to shovel today, so thumbs up for that. That's always always nice. I get a day off from snow. I've been shoveling snow for so long. It's been like one week. Oh my gosh. So yeah, it is kind of funny because I, I, I still just feel like winter just started even though I know actual, you know, the winter seasonal, what is it, solstice? I don't know what you call it. The equinox uh, happened in December. But, you know, we just weren't getting that weather. I mean, Christmas here was green. And I think we were... I think we were... um, Like 50s? Maybe 60s? Yeah. The daughter and I and a few other people went outside and had lightsaber fights on Christmas Day. You know? And, you know, without coats... Hell, at one point, my niece was out there barefoot. (laughs) I was not out there barefoot. So, you know, yesterday... We had another celebrity death. And, you know, and and I gotta be honest, a lot of celebrity celebrity deaths really don't affect me that deeply. You know, I, I, I talked about Bowie earlier in the week. It was really a bad week to be a celebrity and 69 and British. Um, you know, so Bowie didn't, you know, I, I wasn't in tune to him enough to really have it, you know, affect me in any kind of a real emotional way other than, oh, it's sad he's gone. But then yesterday morning I heard that Alan Rickman had died. And that saddened me quite a bit more. I mean, I didn't know him personally. I've never had the chance to meet him. I've seen a number of his films. Um, You know, the ones that stand out in my mind are Die Hard and... uh, Obviously, the Harry Potter films. I remember, you know, I saw, I've seen him in Galaxy Quest. There was, somebody mentioned a Robin Hood film. And I did not remember him in that. And then somebody uh, posted uh, some pictures of him from the film. And I went, oh yeah, I do recall that. So... So, yeah, I, it was, it was, you know, that, that saddened me a bit because I, 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 first of all, I didn't realize that he was sick, that he was, that he had cancer. I had not heard that, not that I necessarily keep up uh, at all, but, 
I, I, you know, so I wasn't really expecting it. I've always felt that the next, I've always really expected that the next alumnus of Harry Potter, I guess I'll, I'll call them that, uh, Harry Potter cast member might be the more proper way to say it, that, that, that was going to pass on would probably be Maggie Smith. Um, cause she's the oldest. No, I'm glad she's, I'm glad she's, she held on for the Harry Potter movies and I'm glad she's held on, um, for this, the final season of Downton Abbey. Uh, cause I really enjoy her as an actress, but you know, just kind of looking at ages and stuff, I always kind of figured that she was the next to go. So I first really became aware of him in Die Hard. Um, and uh, I, I, yeah, I actually thought he was, he was really German at first, because what do I know about German accents? This is a German accent, yeah? We have ways of making you believe our accents. You know, so... I mean, what do I, I, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't know that many authentic German accents. Most of my German accents I learned from Hogan's Heroes, so I, you know, I thought he was German. I later found out he was British. Um, but I, you know, he was, you know, in fact, I just watched Die Hard again towards the end of December because it's a Christmas movie! And... You know, I, I, I enjoy watching Bruce Willis in Die Hard quite a lot. But I equally enjoy watching Alan Rickman as Hans Gruber. Uh, it's... You know, he's got some... You know, he's got some great lines and, and he just he just really comes alive in that role. You know, you got to wonder if they had a better idea of how popular that movie was going to be that they might have found a way for Hans to escape and, you know, brought him back for more movies. Because that would have been, like, awesome. And maybe they get everybody but Hans. And, and Hans some, somehow, you know, survives. And, and and comes back. That would have been cool. But, you know, and, and I kind of feel like, you know... We, we have a real personalized mark of, of Alan Rickman on that because the whole bit in that movie where he's speaking in American accent wasn't originally in the script. And this is a bit of trivia that's pretty widely known. Uh, he was, you know, playing around with an American accent at one point on set and they heard it and said, oh, let's do this. And then we can actually have the two meet. And, uh, you know, so then they built that little bit where, where McLean finds him looking over the things upstairs and, 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 you know, he impersonates he impersonates an American employee. So so there is that. And then and then there's, you know, his role as Severus Snape. Uh, well, yeah, I liked him in Galaxy Quest. I mean, I, I've seen Galaxy Quest once and it's fun because it's, an, it's a fun spoof and, you know, he plays like the you know, he, he's basically playing a, a Leonard Nimoy analog. And that he's this guy that plays this alien that's got these attributes, who's, who's grown to hate the role. Um, and for a while, Nimoy was like that about Spock. I, but, but then, of course, in the movie, he, he comes to, to embrace it. And, you know, I, I liked him in that. Uh, you know, I, 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 and then there's Severus Snape, which is equally as enjoyable for me as, as Hans Gruber, you know, in different ways. You know, I, I guess in both of them, he's kind of got this, you know, snide, sar sarcastic kind of thing going on uh, in both roles. And, and since I can be both of those S words, snide and sarcastic, it just it just really fits me. But, I mean, he was... He's a lot of fun to watch, and he plays that role really well. And ever since seeing, uh, reading, or seeing those movies, um, when I read the Harry Potter books, and you know, I'm kind of feeling like it's getting close to time 
to do another pass through Harry Potter. Um, but whenever I read those books now, when Snape talks, I hear Alan Rickman's voice in my head. Uh, so, so yeah, he's going to be missed. Uh, I should probably look up more of his catalog, in all honesty. There are some movies that got mentioned yesterday on the interwebs uh, that I haven't seen. Some of them I don't know that I've heard of. So I probably should broaden my Alan Rickman experience a little bit. But yeah, I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him. He's he's probably one of my top five favorite actors, I'm going to say. Um, someday maybe I'll have to talk about who the other four are. Uh, <laughs> i got to figure them out. <laughs> I can think of probably one right at the top of my head I'd put there, but uh, <laughs> I'd have to put a little thought into the rest. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking about. You know, I, I've got I've got a picture of Hans as my as my profile pic right now on Facebook and, and Twitter. I'll probably leave that up until tomorrow, maybe. Um, you know, and I, I actually watched watched the video clip of uh, him with uh, Jimmy Kimmel, where he's giving Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, some grief because apparently Benedict Cumberbatch had been on there and did an Alan Rickman um, impersonation, which I actually watched that clip it was pretty funny. But so when he was, you know, having this you know discussion and and you know kind of demanding an apology, they had to do it with the special truth serum, which was breathing in a little bit of helium from a balloon. So they're talking in these high squeaky voices, and it was pretty pretty hilarious. Uh, you know, certainly not the kind of thing you'd envision Sever Snape doing. And then a bit of awesomeness to to end up the day. Um, I actually saw this really late in the day because it was after I got home from class. It was probably right around ten. I I, I ran across this thing that somebody posted, um, I think on Twitter, uh, and then I promptly posted it everywhere. Uh, if you watch Star Wars, A, and you watch Downton Abbey, there is a mashup. It should be on my Twitter stream. It's on my Facebook page. Probably if you just go to YouTube and search for Downton Abbey and Star Wars, you'll find it. Uh, but there is a Downton Abbey Star Wars mashup where we got characters from Downton Abbey fighting with lightsabers on set at the castle where Downton Abbey's filmed and it is it was it's really funny um so I enjoyed that quite a bit that was a nice way to end the day but I guess that will be that for today uh I will be back tomorrow got to hit the grocery shopping yeah and I'll be talking to you then (laughs) so be seeing you